Hello my friends, so now today we are going to discuss about our new lecture on magnetic particle inspections. So, before going to start just let us know what is magnetic particle inspections. So, generally it is a non destructive testing that means we are not going to hamper our materials just from outside we are going to check that whether there is any cracks or pores are present inside the materials or not. So, it is a one kind of testing process for detecting the surface and shallow surface discontinuities in the ferromagnetic materials. So, this is the vital point over there. So, the ferromagnetic materials such as iron, nickel, cobalt and some of their alloys. So, now let us know about the history. So, in the earliest known use of magnetism to inspect an object took place as early as 1868. Cannon barrels were checked for defects by magnetizing the barrels then sliding a magnetic compass along the barrels length. So, when there will be any crack, so simple it will generate some 10 kind of signals that signals we have to catch and we have to know that where the crack is it. In the early 1930s, magnetic particle inspections was quickly replacing the oil and whitening method as the method of choice by the railroad industry to inspect steam engine boilers, wheels, axles and the tracks. Yes, for the railways we are continuously monitoring this kind of cracks at the railway wheels or maybe the railway tracks because uh, when there is a certain change in the temperature then these tracks or maybe the wheels can get certain kind of damage over there due to that this kind of uh, defects may occur. So, now in short form generally we are calling it as a MPI magnetic particle inspections. So, it is very fast and relatively easy to apply and part surface preparations is not as critical as some other NDT testing. It uses magnetic fields and small magnetic particles to detect flaws in components. The method is used to inspect a variety of products from including casting, forging or weldments or maybe any other type of materials. So, we can see the surface integrity of that particular materials. Many different industries use magnetic particle inspections for determining a component's fitness for use. So, now what are the principle behind it? So, first is that magnetic flux leakage that means it will give you the broader idea that what is the uh, logic behind it. So, magnetic moments in a ferromagnetic material have the tendency to become aligned parallel to each other under the influence of a magnetic field. So, here you can see that magnetic flux line these all are the parallel to each other. So, here this is the magnetized metal without the crack. However, unlike the moments in a paramagnet, these moments will then remain parallel when a magnetic field is not applied at all to that particular material. This phenomenon is observed below a critical temperature, generally we are calling it as a Curie temperature above which the material behave like a paramagnetic material. When a homogeneous ferromagnetic material is placed in a magnetic field, it gets magnetized and forms a continuous circuit from pole to pole through the material. So, that means from north pole to south pole it will create a particular circuit. In any surface or subsurface discontinuity is present the magnetic flask leaks out of the material since air cannot support as much as magnetic field per unit volume as metals. So, in this particular case as I told already you can see that all the magnetic flux lines are the parallel one, but when there is certain crack, cracks over there. So, that in that particular cracks the air has been entered into the system. So, that time the magnetic field will be disturbed. As it leaks magnetic flask will collect ferromagnetic particles generally the iron powder making the size shape of the discontinuity easily visible. Basic steps. So, there are total 5 steps are available. So, first one is called the part preparations component pre-cleaning, degreasing and the demagnetizing. Say suppose we are using that particular materials for sometimes in some applications. So, maybe there is we are using certain kind of oil or maybe the grease or maybe we are dipping that materials for uh, any kind of lubrication purpose. So, first we have to clean all those things. Then suppose we are using that materials in a some maybe that pump or maybe there is some motor. 
So, if already any pre magnetizations has been done that the thing we have to remove. Then second one is that introduction of the magnetic field, third one is the application of the fine magnetic particles on the test surfaces, fourth is the examination of the component surface for defect and fifth is the because we are creating the magnetic field or maybe the magnetic flux inside the materials. So, after examining again we have to demagnetizing the component. So, first we will elaborately discussed about all these 5 points. So, about the part preparations, when inspecting a test part with the magnetic particle method, it is essential for the particles to have an unimpeded path for migrations to both strong and weak leakage fields alike. The part surface should be clean and dry before starting the inspections as I told already. Contaminants such as oil, grease or scale may not only prevent particles from being attracted to leakage fields, they may also interfere with interpretations of indications is of course, because if there is any cracks or maybe the pores are present onto the surface. So, if there is any oil or grease are present, so what will happen that cavity will be filled up by those materials. So, first initially we have to clean that surface, so that whatever the cracks and pores that will be without any oil free or maybe the grease free or maybe the any kind of contaminants free, then only we can perform the test and we can achieve the 100 percent result from that. Thin non-conductive coatings such as paint in the order of 0 0.02 to 0 0.5 millimeter. So, this is the vital one will not normally interfere with the formation of indications, because when we are talking about any parts sometimes we need to paint it to uh, restore or maybe to save its working life. So, that if the thickness is below 0 0.02 to 0 0.05 then no need to remove otherwise we have to remove, but they must be removed at all points where electrical contact is to be made for direct magnetizations is yes, of course, because here the paint will act as an insulator. If the part or piece holds a residual magnetic field from a previous magnetizations that will interfere with the examination, the part must be demagnetized. Next come to the second point, now we have to do the introductions of the magnetic field. So, there are a variety of methods that can be used to introduce a magnetic field in a component for evaluation using the magnetic particle inspections. These magnetizing methods are classified as direct magnetizations and the second one is called the indirect magnetizations. So, if we talk about the direct magnetization sometimes it is called as a magnetization using direct inductions. It is also called as current flow method, the magnetizing current flows through the part thereby completing the electric circuit. Magnetic field formed during this method is at right angle to the direction of current flow. Thus, we can locate the defect at right angles to the applied magnetic field directions. So, this is the important one. So, if we flow the current in these directions, the magnetic field will be generated into these directions. So, both will be the exactly the 90 degree to each other. Now, we have to take certain precautions. What are those? First is that when using the direct magnetization method, care must be taken to ensure that good electrical contact is established and maintained between the test equipment and the test component. Second improper contact can result in arcing that may damage the component, yes of course, because we are touching the positive and negative terminal over there. So, if it will not properly touch or maybe there will be a gap, so spark will takes place that can change the shape of our particular material. It is also possible to overheat components in areas of high resistance such as the contact points and in areas of small cross sectional area. Now, what are the types of the direct magnetization techniques? So, there are two main methods through which the direct magnetization is accomplished. First one is called the head shot technique and second one is called the using probes or clamps technique. First one is called the head shot technique. So, here magnetizing current is passed through the component directly by clamping the component between two electrical contacts. If you carefully see the right hand side image, so you can see that this is our main work piece over there right. So, now we are giving two contact points over there. So, directly these contact points are attached with the our specimen and now we are creating the magnetic field. So, this is called the head shot technique. So, both the head just we are 
giving one uh, positive terminal, another one is the negative terminal. Magnetic current produces circular magnetic field in and around the component that creates poles on either side of any crack or discontinuity which runs parallel to the length of the part. Say suppose, so now the current we are giving in this direction, so magnetic flask, so here suppose there is certain crack over there, so it is not there, so there is crack, either it will generate the north pole or south pole or maybe the vice versa. The pole attract magnetic particles which form an indications of the discontinuity. When magnetizing current is stopped, a residual magnetic field will remain within the component. Now again after that we have to do the demagnetization. The strength of the induced magnetic field is proportional to the amount of current passed through the component. So now come to the second one using prods or clamps technique. So, prods are handheld electrodes that are pressed against the surface of the component being inspected to make contact for passing electrical current through the metal. So, in this particular case you can see that is the handheld instrument. So, you can easily carry it and whenever or wherever you need it simple you can put it over there and you can do the test. So, these all are the prods. So, now you can see that we are testing it onto the weld samples. So, we are having two parts then we have joined it and this is the welding zone and then we are testing it. The passing current between the prods create a circular magnetic field around the prods that can be used in magnetic particle inspections. Prods are made from copper and have an insulated handle to help protect the operator. So, easily we can hold it. One of the prods has a trigger switch so that the current can be easily and quickly turned on or maybe the off. So, in this particular case either any of that it is having the switch. Sometimes two prods are connected by an insulator to facilitate one hand operations. In this case you can see that it is uh, both uh, these two prods are segregated but sometimes it may happen that it can join with a particular metals or maybe the insulating materials so that we can do it by only single hand. Next come to the indirect magnetizations. So, generally it is called that magnetizations using indirect induction. It is accomplished by using a strong external magnetic field to establish a magnetic field within the component. So, in this case we are not directly using the current to that particular material to magnetize. So, in this case we are creating the magnetic field just outside the component and then same vice versa we are producing inside the specimen and we are doing the testing. There are several ways that indirect magnetization can be accomplished. Some of the common and useful methods are using permanent magnets, using electromagnet yoke using central conductor, using coils or maybe the solenoids. So, first using permanent magnets. Permanent magnets use is a low cost method to establishing a magnetic field in a part. Their use is limited due to lack of control of field strength and the difficulty of placing and removing strong permanent magnets from the component. So, just what we are doing? We are keeping a permanent magnet just beside our sample. So, that that will affect our sample and then after that we can do the testing. These magnets are used to make inspection under water and explosive environments where electromagnets cannot be used. They can also be used in those congested areas where electromagnet cannot be used or where a source of electric power is not available. So, any remote conditions remote area we can do this testing. Two types of permanent magnets most commonly are bar magnets or maybe the yoke magnets. So, this is the example over there that is the permanent magnet yoke. Now, second is that using electromagnet yoke. So, electromagnets yoke use electric current to produce magnetic field for magnetic particle inspection. They eliminate the problems associated with permanent magnets and are used extensively in industry. So, this is widely used. This yoke is basically made by wrapping an electrical coil around a piece of soft iron core. So, you can see this is known as the soft iron core and if you cut it that inside we can see that it is having the current carrying coil. Electromagnets only exhibit a magnetic flask when the electric current is flowing around the soft iron core. So, when we are passing 
the electric current over there, then that time only the electromagnetic force or maybe the magnetic flask is generating at that particular point through this soft core or maybe sometimes we are calling it as a leg. The design of an electromagnetic yoke can be based on the use of either direct or alternative current or maybe the both. When the magnet is placed on the component, a magnetic field is established between the north and south poles of the magnet. The legs of the yoke can be either fixed or maybe the adjustable. So, nowadays we are using the adjustable one because it is very widely used and widely acceptable for any shape and size we can easily do this kind of test. Adjustable legs permit changing the contact spacings, relative angle of contact to accommodate irregularity shaped parts. Now come to the positioning of electromagnetic yoke on the test surface. In general, discontinuities to be disclosed should be centrally located in the area between the pole and the piece and oriented perpendicular to an imaginary line connecting them. Here are some examples to know how we can use magnetization yoke to make better magnetic particle inspections. So, you can see there are um, uh, we have given certain examples that how we can fix this electromagnetic yoke to get the better results. So, whatever the green in color are the good practice or maybe the right positions and what are the red in color in the cross mark. So, that are the bad practice or maybe we cannot get the proper result. Next using the central conductor. So, another way of indirectly inducing a magnetic field in a material is by using the magnetic field of a current carrying conductor. So, that is the another interesting thing. A circular magnetic field can be established in cylindrical components by using a central conductor itself. Say suppose I am having one cylindrical component, so now I want to test it. So, now how I can generate the magnetic field over there or maybe the magnetic flask over there. So, simple I am taking an cylindrical component here over there and then inside it I am putting my central conductor. In this technique a conductor carrying high ampere H current are passed through that cylindrical components which induces a circular magnetic field in the component to reveal radial and the longitudinal defects. The effective region of examination when using an offset central conductor is equal to 4 times the diameter of the conductor as indicated. Next one is called the using coils or maybe the solenoids. When the length of a component is several times larger than its diameter, then we can produce longitudinal magnetic field using the coil. Say in this case, this is our test specimen or maybe the work piece. So, now suppose you are having a long pipe, whether it is maybe the solid one or maybe the hollow one, now you are going to test it. So, in that case generally we are using this kind of things. In this method the component is placed longitudinally in the concentrated magnetic field that fills the center of a coil. Next direction of the magnetic field. The basic principle of magnetization is to produce the magnetic lines of force across the expected direction of cracks. Two general types of magnetic fields may be established within the specimen. Number one is called the longitudinal magnetizations and the second one is called the circular magnetizations. So, these all are the examples of the longitudinal magnetic field and longitudinal magnetization of crankshaft using the solenoid method. So, first we are going to discuss about the longitudinal magnetizations. It has magnetic lines of force that runs parallel to the long axis of the part. So, you can see here this arrow. Longitudinal magnetization of a component can be accomplished using the longitudinal field set up by a coil or maybe the solenoid. Flexible coil method is useful for large or irregularly shaped parts for which standard solenoids are not available. It can also be accomplished using permanent magnets or maybe the electromagnets. Next come to the circular magnetizations. So, it has a magnetic lines of force that run circumferentially around the perimeter of a part. In that last ca cases we have seen that the magnetic flask was generating in these directions. Now, the magnetic flask is generating into the circular directions along the periphery. A circular magnetic field is introduced 
in an article by either passing current through the component or by passing current through a conductor surrounded by the component itself. This type of magnetization will locate defects running approximately parallel to the axis of the part. So, this is the circular magnetic field and here the circular magnetization of camshaft using the head shot technique. Now, come to the magnetic field orientations and the flaw detectability. Orientation of the crack relative to the magnetic lines of force determines if the crack can or cannot be detected. So, how you are you are going to generate the magnetic flask whether it will be the longitudinal or maybe whether it will be into the circumferential that depends upon that which type of crack is generally you are expecting. So, based on that you have to choose the right method. An orientation of 45 to 90 degrees between the magnetic field and the defect is necessary to form an indications. Since defects may occur in various and unknown directions, each part is normally magnetized in two directions at right angles to each other. So, in this particular case you can see that we are generating the magnetic field. So, current is passing in this case. So, cracks at the 45 degree will show irregular cracks may show or may not show longitudinal crack will show. So, these are the conditions. So, example with circular magnetizations discontinuity that have a significant dimension in the direction of the current are detectable while transverse type defects will not be detectable. So, this is the drawbacks. Now, magnetizing current. Electric current used to establish the magnetic field in components during magnetic particle inspections is known as the magnetizing current. Current flow is often modified to provide the appropriate field within the part itself. There are three types of currents generally we are using. One is called the direct current DC, alternating current AC and the rectified alternating current. So, what is direct current? So, direct current flows continuously in one direction at a constant voltage. So, you see that current, so it is a totally constant, it is not changing. DC is very desirable when inspecting for sub surface defects because DC generates a magnetic field that penetrates deeper into the material, that is the result based theory. In ferromagnetic materials, the magnetic field produced by DC generally penetrates the entire cross section of the component itself. Conversely, the field produced using alternating current is concentrated in a thin layer at the surface of the component. Now, come to the alternating current. So, alternating current reverse in direction at a rate of 50 or 60 cycles per second. So, you can see that it is going into the positive side then again it is coming to negative side. So, it is a some kind of sinusoidal kind of things. So, this is known as the alternating current with time. Since AC is readily available in most facilities, it is convenient to make use of it for magnetic particle inspections, because nowadays everywhere we are using the AC current in our home, office, industry, everywhere. When AC is used to induce a magnetic field in ferromagnetic materials, the magnetic field will be limited to narrow region at the surface of the component itself. This phenomenon is known as the skin effect and occurs because the changing magnetic field generates eddy currents in the test object. So, plus and minus. The eddy currents produce a magnetic field that oppose the primary field thus reducing the net magnetic flask below the surface. Therefore, it is recommended that AZ be used only when the inspection is limited to surface defects. Now, come to the third one that is the rectified alternating current. With the use of rectifiers, the reversing AC can be converted to a one directional current which is known as the rectified alternating current. So, in that case what will happen? You can get a constant current over there, but still you are using the AC current. The three commonly used types of rectified currents are half wave rectified alternating current, generally in short we are calling it as a HWAC, full wave rectified alternating current, generally we are calling it as a FWAC single phase or maybe the three phase full wave rectified alternating current. What is half wave rectified alternating current that is HWAC? 
When single phase alternating current is passed through a rectifier, current is allowed to flow in only one direction. The reverse half of each cycle is blocked out, so that one directional pulsating current is produced in this particular case. Normally, input AC is that as I told already it is having the plus and it is having the minus. So, when you are using the rectifier over there, so the thing is that it will show you only the first part and then the or maybe the positive part and the negative part it will be blocked. The HWAC repeats at same rate as the unrectified current since half of the current is blocked out the amperage is half of the unaltered AC. This type of current is often referred to as half wave DC or maybe the pulsating DC. The pulsation of the HWAC helps magnetic particle indications form by vibrating the particles and giving them added mobility. This added mobility is especially important when using any dry particles. The pulsation is reported to significantly improve inspection sensitivity. HWAC is most often used to power electromagnetic yokes. So, if we use the rectified and filtered AC, so you cannot get any signal. Next come to the full wave rectified alternating current, it is called the FWAC single phase. Full wave rectification inverts the negative current to positive current rather than blocking it out. So, you can see now we are getting a constant one, but first from the positive highest peak it will come to the 0, then again it will reach the highest peak. So, like this way. So, whatever this negative just it is became into the opposite directions. This produce a pulsating DC with no interval between the pulses. Filtering is usually performed to soften the sharp polarity switching in the rectified current. While particle mobility is not as good as half wave AC due to the reduction in pulsation, the depth of the subsurface magnetic field is improved. Now, come to the three phase full wave rectified alternating current. Three phase current is often used to power industrial equipment because it has more favorable power transmission and line loading characteristics. This type of electrical current is also highly desirable for magnetic particle testing because when it is rectified and filtered the resulting current very closely resembles the direct current. So, you can see when you are using the filtering and already you have used the rectifier. So, almost we are getting same like the DC current. Next application of the magnetic particles. So, pa magnetic particle characteristics particle used in MPI are made of finely divided ferromagnetic materials have the following characteristics. What are those? Number 1 it should have high magnetic permeability. It is important because it makes the particle attract easily to small magnetic leakage fields from the discontinuities. Now, we have created the magnetic field. Suppose you are having the cracks and top of that you are putting some kind of ferromagnetic particles. So, what will happen? From the cracks itself the magnetic flask it will attract the magnetic particles. Then after that if you clean out, so you can easily see the cracks over there because that has been taken care by the Magne ferromagnetic materials and if you put some kind of colors over the ferromagnetic materials. So, you can easily detect that where the cracks or maybe any kind of pores are present onto the surface of your workpiece. Next low retentivity, it is important because the particles themselves never become strongly magnetized. So, they do not stick to each other or the surface of the part. So, it should not repel others. Other properties of importance that affect the sensitivity of the MPI are the size, shape, density, mobility and visibility or contrast of the particles. There are two basic forms of magnetic particles used in magnetic particle inspections. What are those? One is called the dry magnetic particles, another one is called the wet magnetic particles. So, what is dry magnetic particles? So, generally the dry particles are primarily used for the examination of welds and castings where the detection of discontinuities lying slightly below the surface is considered important. They are provided in powder form and available in red, black, yellow and grey colors. Magnetic properties, particle size and shape and coating methods are similar in all colors making the particles equally efficient. 
choice of powder is then determined primarily by which powder will give the best contrast and visibility on the parts being examined and the degree of sensitivity desired. So, it depends upon the workpiece color, you have to choose the different color magnetic particles. What are the advantages? Excellent for locating discontinuities which are slightly below the surface, easy to use for large objects and for field examinations with portable equipment, good mobility when used with alternative current or maybe the HW TC, not as messy as the wet particles and equipment usually less expensive. But of course, there are certain limitations, what are those? Not as sensitive as the wet method for very fine and shallow cracks not easy to cover all surfaces properly, especially of irregularity shape or large parts, slower than the wet particles for large number of small parts, difficult to adapt to an automated test system. Next come to the wet magnetic particles. Magnetic particles are also supplied in a wet suspension such as water or maybe the oil. These particles are available in two forms, one is called the visible, another one is called the fluorescent magnetic particles. When exposed to near ultraviolet light or maybe the black light, fluorescent dye coated magnetic particles glow with a highly visible yellow green color. Fluorescent particles are particularly useful for corners, keyways and the defaults type discontinuities. What are the advantages? This method is more sensitive than dry because the suspension provides the particles with more mobility and makes it possible for smaller particles to be used since dust and adherence to surface contaminations is reduced or may be eliminated. It quickly and thoroughly covers all surface irregularly shaped parts large or small with magnetic particles. It is the fastest and most thorough methods for the examination of large number of small particles parts. It is easy to measure and control the concentration of particles in the suspension which makes for uniformity and accurate reproducibility of results. It is readily adaptable to any kind of automated examinations. Now, what are the limitations? Usually wet particles are as reliable of finding discontinuities lying below the surface as dry particles. So, it can detect more precisely. It is messy to work with especially when used in the field testing, a recirculation system is required to keep the particles in suspension, it sometimes present a post examination cleaning problem. So, dry particles means after doing the experiment simple you can make it opposite and the particle will come out, but wet particle means it can adhere to the system either you have to clean it, wash out or some other help you need required. Application of fine magnetic particles on the test surface, dry particle applications, fine magnetic particle in dry powder form are dusted over the test surface, wet particles application, fine magnetic particles suspended in kerosene or any other liquid are sprayed over the test surface after magnetization. Now, come to the examinations of the surface, when fine particles of magnetic materials are applied on the surface of test material. The leakage field attracts particle which forms a outline of the discontinuity and indicate the location, size, extent and shape of the discontinuity. Visible particle clusters formed at specimen surface are viewed under white light, whereas fluorescent particles are viewed under the black light. So, you can see as I told already, so when we are generating the magnetic lines inside, if there is any cracks or pores and top of that when we are putting the magnetic particles over there. So, only through this crack the leakage magnetic field will come and it will attract. So, easily you can understand from the outside where your cracks or maybe the pores are present. Now, come to the visible wet dry met particle methods. So, here are some examples surface defects in gas pipe weld. So, you can easily see cracks in seal weld of boiler tube to seam drum this red in color. Lack of fusion is SMAW weldments, throat and toe cracks in partially ground level. So, you can see by this particular color. Fluorescent weight particle methods, so here crane hook with service induced crack, so it is showing some green yellow green color. 
drive shaft with heat treatment induced cracks. So, before testing and after testing you can see some kind of cracks over there. Gear with the service induced crack, a fine crack you can see over there or maybe the large bolt with service induced crack. These all are the cracks which can easily detectable by this MPI techniques. Now, come to the last one that is the demagnetizations as I told already because first initially you have created the magnetic flask. Now, after that you have to destroy that magnetic flask so that you can use that particular materials. Parts inspected by the magnetic field particles method may sometimes have an objectionable residual magnetic field that may interfere with subsequent manufacturing operations or service of the component. Written magnetic field depends upon magnetic characteristics of component geometry of the component, direction of the magnetizations, strength of the magnetic field. Effects of residual magnetizations or maybe the magnetism in effect machining by causing cutting to cling to a component. Interfere with navigational instruments that are sensitive to magnetic fields if placed in close proximity. Create a condition known as arc blow in the welding process, arc blow may cause the weld arc to under or filler material to be repelled from the weld, cause abrasive particles to cling to bearing or feying surface and increase the wear. Now, what are the methods of demagnetizations? There are two methods of demagnetizations, one is the simple one that heating method, another one is called the electrical method. So, when we are talking about the heating method, this random orientation of magnetic domains can be achieved most effectively by heating the material above its Curie temperature. When part is heated above its Curie temperature, it loses its magnetic properties. When it is cooled back down, it will go through a reverse transformation and will contain no residual magnetic field. The material should also be placed with it long axis in an east to west orientations to avoid any influence of earth's magnetic field. So, we have to keep it into the east and west direction. If we talk about the electrical method, so it is subjecting the component to a reversing and decreasing magnetic field will return the dipoles to a nearly random orientation throughout the material. So, now you have to do the opposite thing. To demagnetize a part, the current or magnetic field needs has to be equal to or greater than the current or magnetic field used to magnetize the part either it should be equal or maybe it should be more than that. The current or magnetic field is then slowly reduced to 0 leaving the part demagnetized. Now, what are the advantages, limitations and applications of the magnetic particle inspections? So, first is the advantages, rapid and economical compared to other NDT methods, staff can be trained quite rapidly to operate a procedure. It can detect both surface and near subsurface discontinuity. It can inspect parts with irregular shapes easily. Pre cleaning of components is not as critical as it is for some other inspection methods. Inspection and indications are first and visible directly on the specimen surface, very portable method, especially when used with battery powered equipment. Now, limitations it can only be used on ferromagnetic materials, that is a vital one. So, your material should have that property. Unable to inspect non ferrous materials such as aluminum, magnesium or most stainless steels. It is only effective for seeking surface breakings or near surface defects. Components or materials must be magnetized in at least two directions for complete coverage. Components or materials often must be demagnetized after magnetic particle testing. Weldments with different magnetic characteristics of base metal and wind metal are difficult to inspect. Post cleaning and post demagnetization is often necessary, yes, because if you are joining two different dissimilar metals, then that time really, really it is a problem. Applications industries that use MPI are structural steel, automotive, petrochemical, power generation, and the aerospace industries. Underwater inspection is another area where MPI may be used to test items such as offshore structures and any underwater pipelines. Now, we have come to the last slide of this particular lecture. So, now we have to summarize the whole thing. So, generally in this particular lecture we have discussed about the magnetic particle inspections is a fast and relatively easy non-destructive testing method 
for surface subsurface flow inspection in ferromagnetic materials. It is based on the magnetic flask leakage caused by material discontinuities which collects magnetic particles either may be the dry or may be in a wet suspension to form the indications. Different types of direct or maybe the indirect methods are used to magnetize the component to perform the inspections. After conducting a magnetic particle inspections, it is usually necessary to magnetize it so that it can again use for next operations or maybe the other things. Thank you.